Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. There have been a number of human trials looking at NMN as an NAD booster. These have been generally positive, but have mostly not been able to reproduce the results that have been seen in the preclinical, mostly mouse studies. One possible reason for this is the different levels of absorption of NMN across individuals. This paper is looking to see if the change in NAD level is used as a variable rather than the dose of NMN, will this be a better marker for the outcome? NAD levels decline with age, and NMN has been shown to be able to improve the levels of NAD as measured in blood. However, what the optimal dose is remains unclear. In the paper, the authors reviewed the data from a trial which was conducted earlier, where the participants were split into four groups a placebo or 300, 600 or 900 milligrams of NMN per day. The trial was a randomized clinical trial with 80 participants aged between 40 and 65 years old. A quick note here that this is a post hoc analysis of the data. And while it can be insightful, predefined endpoints in a pre hoc analysis are generally more reliable because they avoid the bias of searching the data for something interesting after the fact. So this should be viewed as a pointer to possible future studies. In the trial, the measured outcomes were blood NAD concentration, biological age, insulin resistance as measured by HOMA IR, six minute walk test, and the 36 question short form survey. These were measured at baseline 30 and 60 days. There was a dose dependent increase of NAD with the NMN supplementation but with a wide variance between individuals. They did find that improved six minute walk test occurred for NAD increases of 15.7 nanomoles per liter and the short form 36 question score for increases of 13.5 nanomoles per liter. And their conclusion is that because the individual variance in changes of NAD levels, monitoring this could provide further insight into the effects of NMN. This is the paper that they used for the data. We reviewed it when it was released and I have linked to the video above. The link to the paper, which is open access, is also provided into the description below. To briefly describe the study, 80 healthy adults, including both male and female, aged between 40 and 65, with a BMI between 18.5 and 35, were randomized into four groups. The participants were given either a placebo 300 milligrams, 600 milligrams, or 900 milligrams of NMN per day for a total of 60 days. At baseline and the 60 day mark, they measured age, sex, BMI, biological age, and HOMA IR. At baseline 30 and 60 days, they also measured blood NAD levels, six minute walk test, and the 36 short form survey scores. The change in NAD serum levels was dependent on the dose. However, the range was very wide and the coefficient of variation between 29 and 113 percent. Interestingly, there was no significant difference between the 600 and 900 milligrams per day groups. NAD delta is the change in NAD levels from baseline to 30 or 60 days. The participants were arranged into 20 groups of four based on their NAD delta values rather than the NMN dosage. A higher NAD was significantly associated with better improvement in the six minute walk test and the SF36 survey at both 30 and 60 days. Each one nanomole increase was associated with 1.37 meter increase in the six minute walk test and 0.02 in the square root of the, of the SF score. They used the square root of the SF score to normalize the distribution for their statistics. The authors defined a clinically significant result for the walk test as being an increase of 30 meters or more, and for the SF36 survey of being an increase in the score of 10 points or more from baseline. They defined a value ED50, which is the dose required for 50% of the participants to see these improvements. In these graphs, each one of the dots represents one of the NAD groups. The vertical axis shows the number of the participants who reached the clinical threshold. As there were four people in each group, zero means none did, 
0 0.25 means one member up to one, which means that all four members in the group reach the threshold. The place where the best fit line for the ED50 runs gives a delta NAD for the walk test of 15.65 nanomoles per liter and for the SF36 survey of 13.51 nanomoles per liter. So what this means is that above an NAD value delta of 15.65 nanomoles per liter, over 50% of the participants saw a greater than 30 meter improvement in the walk test. Why do we see a large variation in individual NAD levels based on the same dose? They offer a few possibilities. One is the impact of the microbiome. As we discussed with Dr. Joseph Bauer and Dr. Lindsay Wu, the microbiome can metabolize NMN in different ways and provide different levels of different metabolites for us to absorb. Another option is the amount of CD38 present, which consumes NAD or the difference in the NAD salvage pathway gene expression. As most NMN studies have been small, it is possible that the variation hides clinically significant outcomes, and the authors propose in a similar way to Dr. Sher when we talked to him, that using the NAD level changes and potentially adjusting the dose accordingly would be valuable in NMN clinical trials. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well.